Good morning. I'm Brent Lowe, Superintendent of Butler County Schools, coming in, coming to you with a, another installment of the Fireside Chat. Um, I do want to apologize for being it's been a little bit of time between our last one, but as you know, we've been dealing with some stuff across the state, um, which kind of leads me to the my first um, my first public service announcement, so to speak. Um, if you could please, um, I'm, I'm asking this for parents and community members. Please talk to your children um, and kids in the community community um, about what is appropriate to say and not say. Um, unfortunately, after events such as the events that happened up in Appalachia, um, at Appalachia High School, what we have is we'll have people that, that make comments, um, whether they're, they're meaning to make the comments in, in, in a true threat or if it's, if it's just in a jest or as in a joke. Um, we have to take all these seriously and you make a comment like um, a, a comment in just in jest excuse me um, and we have to prosecute it and we have to take it to the full extent um, so so please let your kids know that you can't you can't say stuff like that um, and not in this day and time um, this is not the, 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 the society that we grew up in when we were young and so you have to be careful of what you say um, or you have to, to, to face consequences. And, and we don't want um, a silly, really a dumb statement to be made and it, it costs you your, your, um, your, your school career and, and possibly can change the outcome of your life. So just, just wanted to say that. Um, the second thing uh, as a public service announcement um, to, to, to put out is um, we are, uh, as a school system, we're aware of the tropical disturbance um, in the Gulf of Mexico right now. We're monitoring the situation um, every day, twice a day, we're getting um, updates. Um, and so if, if something needs to happen with, with anything later in the week, uh, you'll, you'll be um, notified through the infinite campus and then our other uh, forms of uh, communication. So we are watching um, this disturbance. It hasn't become a tropical uh, storm yet. It hasn't been named yet, but we know that it's out there brewing, so we are watching. Now, now that I've got that out of the way, uh, what I wanted to do is really talk to you a little bit today um, about uh, part of our strategic plan and kind of an update. If you were at the board meeting or if you watched the board meeting online, you've already seen part of what I'm fixing to say today. But what I want to talk to you about is, is, is PLC or professional learning communities. I know that in education, a lot of times we use um, use acronyms and we just throw, throw letters out there. It's almost an alphabet soup, so to speak. Um, but we just kind of want to talk you through our PLC um, process. Once again, PLC stands for professional learning community. Now this doesn't mean that we have a meeting once a week and we call it a professional learning community. We do have designated professional learning community days, but it does not stop with those meetings. And each school has a different one. And it's where they get together and they talk about uh, about the assessments we're given and, we're, and, and the data, analyzing the data and, and looking at what we can do to better our uh, students in the school system. But just to kind of give you a quick, a quick rundown, um, this is part of our uh, strategic goal one, which is excellence in student achievement. We believe that if we get a group of a group of teachers together looking at the data, we'll have a much better outcome than just teachers working in silos and staff members working in silos. So that's where the the, the, the idea of a professional learning community or PLC came about. To kind of tell you what we're doing a little bit, just so you know, and we're all speaking somewhat the same language. Uh, our, our teachers have, have met over the summer and started um, constructing common summative assessments and these are based on the idea that every unit in every grade in every subject uh, the state gives you a, a kind of a breakdown of the unit um, that's our pacing guide so in, a, in other words I'll use uh, U.S. history as, as an example the state says U.S. history can be divided into eight to ten units and at the end of each unit uh, we, we give a common summative assessment used to be called unit test uh, but now we're doing the common summative assessment so let's break it back down a little bit further if you look at our our younger grades let's say in third grade we're, we're going to give a, 
uh, third grade math, we've got a, uh, a unit on fractions. At the end of that unit, every third grade teacher in Butts County School, depending on what uh, school they're at, they're gonna give this common summative assessment. It's the sum of what they should have learned in unit, the unit on fractions, okay? So that way we can compare across the board, number one, are, are all of our schools teaching at the same at the same level? Are all of our schools teaching at the same pace? Uh, we want to make sure that our students are getting getting the information that they need um, based on state standards, and then are they getting it in a in a, an adequate time period? So that's kind of where we are on the common summative assessments. Now within each unit. And this is done not at the district level, but at the school level. They are common formative assessments. These are, could be considered your weekly quizzes. Um, they, these are things where benchmarks throughout each unit. So uh, we know that at the end of the unit, we're going to have a common summative assessment. So throughout the unit, we have these benchmarks that are common formative assessments. Now, the, the big thing about this is they're common. In other words, each teacher or each teacher is expected to give the same formative assessment throughout the unit. Um, I, I've used the high school and I've used the, the, the elementary school, so I'll use the middle school as this example. Let's say that, that, that we've got uh, three eighth grade history teachers, uh, and, and there may be more than that, but let's say three eighth grade history teachers um, and they know that at the end of, of, of the, the unit on colonization, they've got to get to the common summative assessment standards. So what they'll do is they'll decide, okay, throughout this three week uh, unit, we're going to take a common formative assessment every third. And, and that, that assessment, when the, when the teacher gives that assessment, they, they then take the data and how the kids performed on it. And then they discuss it in their professional learning community assigned meeting the next week and they determined, hey, did we teach the standards as well as we should have? Do the kid did the kids get the standards as good as they should have? Do we need to look at, at teaching different um, different ways? What do we do with the kids who got the standards? How do we enrich them? What do we do with the kids who didn't get the standards? What do we do to remediate them? And we do all that within our classes. Uh, the next step in this is to uh, is, is, is give the teachers the opportunity to know their kids. Uh, so, so this is these are the, the, the after these data talks, they, they have to look within their classroom and decide, okay, I have five kids that didn't get this standard, so I've got to remediate them. How am I going to do that? And that, that's done within the teacher's classroom. The idea behind all this is, is to, to, to look at data and to make sure that, that we're reaching kids where they are, providing them a, a, a good base, and, and then letting them have the opportunity to, to, to make mistakes and grow from their mistakes. Um, if, if we can get, as soon as we get all this in place, you'll start seeing, uh, seeing a, a change in, in overall performance. I just, it's, it's, a, it's a common understanding uh, of the, the information that they're expected to know. Uh, I, I do want to say that the next, kind of the next step, and we've already begun this, is, is where students will start setting their own goals. Um, we, we started a process, and I'm not going to get into the details of this today, but we'll, it will be down the road. It is a process called Leader and Me, through Franklin Covey, Franklin and Stephen Covey, excuse me, and it's based on the seven uh, practices of highly effective people. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the base of it, but then it gets into every person has a leadership quality and what they need to do is they need to start setting individual goals and if the student knows the goal, the teacher knows the goal, and they know the step to get to the goal, then, uh, then, it, then everybody's successful. Uh, I, I truly hope that, that the day has been informative. Um, it, it, it is it's a lot of teacher lingo, and I know that, um, but, but I think it's important that everybody in the community, all of the stakeholders understand what we've got going in, in our school uh, in an effort to improve our student achievement and to improve better understanding. Um, 
if, if that's really all I have for you today, I do want to say that we are, I want to reiterate that we are uh, monitoring the weather um, this, this week. So uh, be cognitive if you get a uh, infinite campus, if you're a parent and you get an infinite campus update, please please pay attention to what we send out um, and, and, and know that we are watching the weather. Thank you.